que nos entreguen con vida a los 43 totalistas. It's been four months since 43 students from the Ayotzinapa Normal School were attacked and disappeared by local police and the Guerreros Unidos drug gang in the city of Iguala, Guerrero. In the course of the investigation, the Mexican government's leads have indicated that most likely the students were killed at a dump, incinerated there, and then their remains were thrown in a river where they were later found. But still, 42 of these young men remain missing, and technically the case is still open. Almost a hundred people have been detained and questioned in regards to the case. Among them, the supposed material author of the massacre, Felipe Rodriguez, known as El Cepillo, or The Brush. However, the parents and society at large have demanded for the case to remain open in the face of several questions the Mexican government hasn't been able to answer. The parents have remained firm. In fact, while most Mexican workers and students took the customary winter break for Christmas and New Year, the Ayotzinapa parents and students celebrated their Christmas Eve by holding the demonstration right at the doorstep of Los Pinos, the presidential residence. <laughs> Two days later, a couple thousand protesters hit the streets with the parents in a march to commemorate the three-month mark of the massacre. Como ven, si estoy temblando, estoy temblando de rabia, pero no de miedo, señores, de verdad. Por lo que hemos sufrido y seguiremos sufriendo. Hasta que nuestros hijos los miremos. Y si no es así, no sé qué vaya a pasar. Pero nosotros estamos adelante y estamos encabronados. Y este coraje que traemos, solamente haciendo algo para quitarnos esto, esta rabia que traemos, señores. Until then, the Attorney General's office had only been able to identify one of the missing students, 19-year-old Alexander Mora. He was identified after the University of Innsbruck in Austria tested remains selected by the Argentine Forensic Anthropology Team, a group of independent experts. However, these forensic experts also noted that they could not guarantee that the remains of Alexander Mora were really picked up at the river, as the government claimed. Later, scientists at Innsbruck said they were not able to identify any victims with the other sampled remains they received and that their upcoming test will be their last, as the samples will be destroyed in the process of analysis. When Vice News examined just two out of 82 total volumes of the government's case file, other doubts came up. We found that other victims might have been killed that night, although their identities remain uncertain. The government has mostly ignored other lines in the case. Magazines in Mexico have also published several investigations of their own, questioning the Attorney General's version. Proceso, an oppositional political magazine, made a string of intriguing claims about the case, but which we could not independently verify. Journalist Anabel Hernandez claims federal forces were involved in the attacks and disappearances. Bueno, esta investigación eh, primero está basada en los expedientes judiciales y ministeriales del caso. Tenemos eh, material sustento para afirmar categóricamente que la versión oficial que ha dado el gobierno federal hasta ahorita es eh, falsa. Pero los estudiantes desde sus primeras declaraciones implicaron directamente al ejército no como omiso, sino más bien como un actor que esa noche los estaba amenazando y los estaba acosando, los estaba buscando. On January 12th, fueled by the doubts raised by the Argentine forensics team and media investigations, the Ayotzinapa parents, Normalista students, and unidentified masked individuals attempted to storm the military base in Iguala, alleging that soldiers were involved in some way in the disappearances. During this confrontation, parents and students, as well as military police, were injured with rocks and bottles thrown from both sides. 
Later, the Interior Secretary, Miguel Ángel Osorio Chong, said that the parents had been previously invited to inspect the army barracks, but that they had refused the invitation. As of today, parents of the missing and their attorneys have refused to set a date to enter the military base that they stormed. It's not clear why. In the face of this situation, at the four-month mark of the tragedy, the parents once again showed their conviction to their cause in the streets of Mexico City. The day after, on the morning of January 27th, during a televised speech, President Enrique Peña Nieto hinted to Mexican society that it was time to move on. Este momento en la historia de México de pena, de tragedia y de dolor no puede dejarnos atrapados. No podemos quedarnos ahí. Later that same day, Attorney General Jesús Murillo Caram called the media for an important announcement. Esto y muchos otros elementos aportados durante la investigación permitieron realizar un análisis lógico causal y llegar sin lugar a dudas, a concluir que los estudiantes normalistas fueron privados de la libertad, privados de la vida, incinerados y arrojados al río San Juan en ese orden. Esta es la verdad histórica de los hechos. All the students were killed and incinerated at a dump outside Iguala, he said, calling it a legal certainty and the historical truth. But is it? The prosecutor's office presented an updated version of the events using a video with a somewhat creepy and inappropriate soundtrack. Privan de la vida a todos los estudiantes y acto seguido, el terco ordena que en la parte baja del basurero se disponga un lugar con ramas sobre las cuales colocan los cuerpos sin vida de los normalistas, incluyendo todas sus pertenencias y teléfonos celulares, y a continuación les prenden fuego con diésel y gasolina. But Murillo Karam didn't present any new physical evidence that would support the claim. No new victims were identified, and the government admitted that it will be nearly impossible to ever properly identify the victims from the ashes and bits of bone. There is also no conclusive proof, in the end, that soldiers or federal officers were directly involved in the attacks on the night of September 26. At least, not yet. No hay una sola evidencia de que haya intervenido el ni una sola. Las mismas declaraciones iniciales de los que hoy dicen que el ejército fue, lo acusaban de omisión. Las mismitas. No hay una sola, una sola evidencia de la participación del ejército. Ni siquiera había un grupo razonable. Muchas gracias. But maybe Murillo Karam is also speaking too soon. Soldiers and federal forces arguably bear responsibility for their inaction for not protecting the students as they should any other civilian under attack from organized crime. We tried to schedule an interview with Attorney General Murillo Karam regarding these questions, but an aide to the prosecutor eventually told us that he would no longer be giving interviews about the subject. Four months later, there is still no smoking gun directly linking the military to the violence. However, there is a precedent Historically, Mexican military units stationed in Guerrero have been accused of the violent repression of leftists and dissidents, particularly during the Dirty War period in the 1970s. Most recently, uh, military units stationed in Guerrero have been accused of forced disappearance of civilians by international human rights watchdog groups. So, the theories really don't come out of the blue, but so far, they remain unproven. That same night, the parents of the disappeared held a press conference to respond to the government's claims, demanding that the students be found and that the investigation be completed. But the case is still under international scrutiny. The Inter-American Human Rights Commission has designated a group of four recognized human rights lawyers to work on the case of the missing students. 
On February 2nd and 3rd, parents of the missing were present at a report Mexican authorities delivered to the United Nations Committee on Enforced Disappearances. The committee said Mexico still faced serious problems with respect to the issue, and specifically mentioned the Ayotzinapa case and the scores of open complaints from the dirty war.